Breath of the Wild changing up the Zelda formula meant throwing away traditional dungeons. No more fire temples, earth temples, or flying cities full of chicken people. Yeah, Twilight Princess was a weird one, not gonna lie. No, instead of traditional dungeons, we have the shrines. Well, and the Divine Beasts, but they're a topic for another video. The shrines are a set of 120 mini dungeons hidden or in plain sight across the overworld, designed as tests of strength or intellect for the hero of the wild, Link. So today I'm going to run you guys through my 5 favourite Breath of the Wild shrines. Hidden in the new expansive world of Hyrule are some really creative and awesome challenges, so let's get into it. Number 5 Shrine Toyasha Buried Secrets Probably a controversial pick for the first one on my list since I've seen a weird amount of people complaining about it, but it's one of those puzzles for me that took a while and then just clicked, which for me is one of the best thing about Zelda's. This shrine is located on the Thundra Plateau, a raised area perpetually engulfed in a pretty angry looking thunderstorm, as the name suggests. To uncover the shrine, these four coloured orbs need to be placed in front of four big statues. The problem is, two of the orbs are located off the raised plateau, and the plateau itself is too high to throw them up. The first time I solved this, it took forever to work out, and I didn't actually think the solution I got would work. Hey, what about if I just, like, golf it over? Let's give it a bit of welly and... Huh. Freezing the orbs with stasis and then smacking them on over onto the plateau turns out to be a pretty easy way to solve this. The actual shrine itself too is quite fun, I mean nothing particularly challenging, but a fun bomb based challenge anyway. Overall this shrine stood out to me because of the simple but clever puzzle in order to uncover it, which is part of what I love about Zelda. Number 4 Shrine Lakna Rocky, Kakariko Village I'm going to have to give a little spoiler warning for this one because even though it's a couple months after release, it is an important side quest, or at least I think it is. The reason I like this shrine so much is that the story told in its shrine quest is actually pretty dark. Basically the shrine quest revolves around this orb that Impa keeps as an heirloom in Kakariko Village. After a few side quests in Kakariko Village are done, you'll find out that the orb has been stolen during the night due to Paya's complete incompetence. It took me a while to hunt down the culprit who was supposedly sneaking around at night. I followed this suspicious looking lady only to find out she was just sneaking out at night to mourn her dead lover. Yikes. Then I noticed one of the guards, Dorian, also sneaks out at night, so followed him out of the village and up to the Sheikah altar, where it's revealed that a Yiga clansman was responsible for the theft, after Dorian informed them what the heirloom was, working as a double agent. I was ready to fucking throw down on this guy for backstabbing the Sheikah before we get to learn his story and the reasons for his actions. He was a Yiga clansman who left the evil cult because he met the love of his life, and had two kids with her. But the Yiga weren't happy with this, they hunted and murdered his wife, then threatened to kill his children too if he didn't stay in Kakariko as an informer for them. Jesus, that's pretty damn heavy, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, the actual shrine itself just a blessing shrine, but still, the story you have to go through to get it is hard hitting enough to earn it a spot on this list. Easy. Number 3 Shrine Keto Wawai, Typhlo Ruins Oh my god this shrine. If you're afraid of the dark, this isn't the shrine for you. Located in Typhlo Ruins, an ancient maze shrouded in pitch darkness in an island forest. While there's a convenient torch placed at the entrance to the maze, I made the mistake of opening a chest halfway through, extinguishing it and leaving me blind in the thick blackness of a monster infested maze, without even a flint to make a fire. However, in true Breath of the Wild DIY style, I used a fire arrow to give myself a little bit of light to navigate the labyrinth. Though, as I got deeper into the maze, I started to hear a low rumbling in the distance, almost like something huge was breathing at- oh fuck. A pitch black Hinox fight? That's not terrifying at all. Killing the beast and using the orb on its neck to unlock the shrine results in one of those blessing shrines where it's basically a free item and a spirit orb, no challenge at all. But the sheer creativity and well, just how awesome this shrine challenge was venturing into the unknown darkness with just a little wooden torch, or in my case makeshift lantern made of a fire arrow, on hand is exactly what I wanted when waiting for this game. Just incredible. Number 2 Shrine Korgu Chide, Eventide Island 
Ah, Eventide Island. This shrine doesn't need an introduction because it's one of the coolest and most talked about things to discover in the game. If for some reason you haven't actually visited this island, located in the southeast of the map, turn the video off right now and go there. We good? Okay. Eventide Island is basically a traditional survival island. As soon as you land on the shore, you're stripped of all your equipment by some apparently very powerful but kinda dickish Sheikah monk, meaning you have to take on the island with whatever you can scavenge on it. To unlock the shrine, you've got to find three Sheikah orbs and place them in three altars. Sounds easy, right? Well, the first one kinda is, but the second and third are a lot more difficult because they're defended by moblins, bokoblins, and even a Hinox. Killing this thing is a massive pain with no equipment, so it's usually just best to try and nick it while he's sleeping. I think part of the charm of this island is that it takes you right back to the start of the game, the Great Plateau, where we had nothing and had to scavenge to survive. This awesome throwback to the time where we didn't have incredibly powerful equipment and had to rely on what we could find for ourselves is why I've given Eventide the number two spot on this list. Number one. So we've already had some absolute classics on this list. A pitch black battle with a Hinox, a dark and emotional side quest, and an island survival adventure. What could top these? Well, in my opinion, the shrine that I enjoyed most in Breath of the Wild was Shrine Maka Ra, Steady Thy Heart. Huh? What's that? You don't recognise it? Unless you know the game inside out or have just recently beat this one, I don't think this is a shrine that'd stand out particularly because it's quite straightforward. From this little coast and dock, you can spot the familiar Sheikah orange glow through a crack in the rocks, though getting to it isn't as simple as just walking through. It took me quite a while to stop stupidly bombing and hitting this little crack and actually explore around where I found a little sequence of natural air vents that eventually lifted me high above the river so I could see a cave opening in the side of the cliff that I couldn't before. Following this cave network through a little underground river reveals the shrine, which is a really fun challenge which balances both puzzles, combat, and of course a helpful share of complete fucking bullshit. What the hell? So why is this shrine my favourite? To be quite honest, I'm not sure. Maybe in future playthroughs I'll prefer another, but right now, I think I love this one because it does exactly what I think shrines should. It's an overworld secret that I had to go out of my way to explore, and finding it felt really good, like I'd accomplished something. Then, the actual shrine itself was a really fun mini dungeon that felt very, well, Zelda. A nice mix of puzzles and combat like the older 3D games. Steady Thy Heart was a fantastic shrine, and I think it captures best what shrines in this game should be. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, leave a like, and if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.